The Prophet ﷺ was such a beautiful person that he used to dress up beautifully and apply perfume when he used to go home to his family. How many of us, we want our women to look nice, but you look like a tramp. Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet ﷺ used to dress up for who? For his family. How many of you? And I challenge you, it's a Friday. We're talking of the best husband, the most, the, the most blessed of all creation, the highest in rank of all. I tell you one thing, we need to follow him. Let's not just pay lip service to it. It's not just about lip service, my beloved brothers and sisters. Dress up, you go home, take pride in your hair, take pride in your clothing, what you look like, you, what you smell like. You come home, they should look at you and feel attracted. Come on. The Prophet ﷺ was intimate with his spouses and he fulfilled that right of his spouses. How many of us, a month passes, we haven't even been intimate with our halal wife. She's busy waiting, she's dressing up, she's trying to attract you, so I'm tired. You're tired for what? There's an ibadah to happen at night. Some of us might be weak for tahajjud, but you can't come and complain that you cannot be intimate with your own spouse. You get a similar reward. Wallahi. And I'm not ashamed to speak about it. I've spoken about it several times because men are guilty of thinking that women don't have sexual needs. This was the Prophet ﷺ. He tells the companions, Fi budu'i ahadikum sadaqa. Remember when you're intimate with your wife and you fulfill her needs and you satisfy her, it is an act of charity. So when you get home and you are intimate with your spouse, remember, even during the menstrual cycle, the Prophet ﷺ used to do everything besides intercourse with his own spouse, subhanallah. He, and we cannot get into further details, but the Prophet ﷺ has explained this to a certain extent. We stop at that extent. He says everything besides the act itself, because you and I know that is prohibited during the menstrual cycle, but you can still do a lot, subhanallah. You can still do a lot. Many people, oh, so you're on your cycle. All right, see you after a week. What's going on? I'm being honest. That's a woman. It's not her fault. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Treat them with respect. That is a husband. That is what the Prophet ﷺ told us. He instructed us. He said it with his own mouth, his blessed lips. The Prophet ﷺ, he was very, very kind. Let's go to a point of romance. The Prophet ﷺ used to kiss his wives, subhanallah. He used to kiss them and the kisses are described. I don't have the time for because it's Jumu'ah. But if I could describe that kiss, I don't want to know what might happen to our Jumu'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. And the Prophet ﷺ used to eat and drink or drink from the same spot that his wife drank from. Subhanallah. This is mentioned by his own wives to say he was so romantic. He used to make us blush. Have you made your wife blush? You say, yeah, she gets red very often. She gets red with anger, not blushing. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. It's a reality. So this was the Prophet ﷺ. You know, he used to lean on his spouse, leaning. Sometimes he would lean, he would put his leg on, on her thigh, etc. And you know what? It's described in the hadith. Did you know that? Did you know that? So we will do it, a'udhu billah, with someone haram, but halal, no ways. That's my wife, she should know I love her. He would declare his love for his spouse. He said, Allah has blessed me with the love of Khadija. That's what he says. I love her. How many of you tell your wives, I love you? Say it in the presence of your children, no problem. They will learn how to treat their wives and, and their spouses when they grow older. We've hidden the good things sometimes. So the children don't know how to be with their spouses. The Prophet ﷺ took the time to play games with his spouses. Games. He would, he would literally race with some of his spouses. Come, let's race. I run from here to there and let's see who wins. Subhanallah. It may not be racing in our case, but it could be. It's still a sunnah, but it could be any other game. I will, I, I'm sure I'll take you out. Subhanallah. Let's play this game. Would you? We don't have the time. Why are we too busy with all other things? Your spouse comes first. Family first. Remember that it's an Islamic idea. Wallahi. Family first is an Islamic idea. Obviously, this is after Allah and Rasulullah That is worship. Now we're talking of worshiping Allah, following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But when it comes to relationships, your family is definitely first. If your family comes after your friends, you have lost. You are far from being a true Muslim. Far. 
your family first and then your friends. Now what happens is at night, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that if you don't have anything constructive to do after Salat al-Isha, go to bed. Why? Your wife is waiting for you. The problem with us, we'll go to bed but still be on WhatsApp until 2 in the morning. Right? Subhanallah. The wife tosses and turns this way and that way. I hope it's not the other way around, mashallah. But tossing, turning, and you're not getting the message. Subhanallah. She's trying to touch you and you say, hey, wait. But where is the Islam in you? Your Islam should make you think, why am I taught to come to bed here? For what? I'm supposed to go to bed because I have a spouse. Why did you get married if you don't want to spend the nights with your wife? For what? Sit with her, talk to her, play with her, be intimate with her, fulfill her rights, satisfy her, go to bed, get up for Salatul Fajr or Tahajjud, and don't be ashamed to have a shower. Even if the whole house knows what happened at night, so what? It was halal. Not ashamed. Your children will grow up doing the same thing. The Prophet ﷺ, at times he had his spouse comb his hair and so on. He played with their hair as well. So much of this romance and intimacy that is described for us, it's, it's, it's actually sad how far we've become the only sunnah that the men actually talk about, or a lot of them talk about, is don't pretend like you don't know, guys. Subhanallah. Second wife, it's a sunnah. Wow. Second is a sunnah. What sunnah? Start off with these things. Correct it is. I'm not denying it, but I'm saying you haven't even lived as a husband yet. And you want to start being a husband for more. You've messed up one's life. You're going to mess up all the other's lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So the Prophet Sallallahu used to laugh with them. He used to extend help in the home to his spouses. The Prophet Sallallahu used to praise his family members, his wives. He used to praise them, especially with others. My wife is tops. Just that tops is enough. Subhanallah. A man thinks sometimes that he's going to be considered small when he praises his wife. Say the truth. You don't have to talk about the negatives. Behind the backs, you're not supposed to talk about negatives regarding normal human beings. With your family members, you are supposed to cover them. You are supposed to protect them. You are supposed to be a libas, a clothing for them. When I wear clothing, the gash that I may have due to an operation that I might have had when I was a kid is covered. You can't see it. The same applies when you are a clothing to your spouse. You don't have to go and tell them all the bad. You say the good things. Subhanallah, that's my wife. What are you talking about? She's a lovely lady. Mashallah. I really respect her. I really acknowledge she sacrifices so much for me, for the children. But you know, we are weak. Sometimes we don't know how to reciprocate it. May Allah make it easy for us. And then the Prophet ﷺ used to be happy when they used to get their friends over. Wow, this is a tough one, right? Wife, her friends come over and what happens? The Prophet ﷺ used to actually make way for them. They used to be shy. With us, your friends are coming. What's happening? How can your friends be here? Am I not here? So once in a while you need to have the friends over. Yes, I do agree. If they're there every day, all day, subhanAllah, it will create a bit of a disaster. But we're talking of once in a while, the Prophet ﷺ used to be happy. Allow her to mix with her friends as well. For as long as they are reasonable company, sometimes good company, but if it's bad company, evil, then perhaps you want to address the matter with respect. Don't yell, don't scream. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to look at his wives, the eyes that he used to look with, used to make them blush. Subhanallah. The way he used to look at them, I can just imagine. I can only imagine because obviously he was a far higher example. Imagine a woman like Aisha radiallahu anha blushing and the Prophet ﷺ just looking at her. I wonder what look that was. Please go home and try it. Please go home and try it. And some of us, we've never done it. So when you look the first time, she might say, stop looking at me like a devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. He used to feed his wife with his own hand at times pick up the morsel and said i'm feeding you then whenever they wanted something he used to get it for them he used to get it for them and obviously they were not extravagant where they wouldn't have asked right you heard i need the mercedes i need a, this i need a new kitchen i need a new bathroom and toilet i need everything new you heard what the prophet sallam used to do when his wives used to say he used to get it for them that's not it not that bad come on but 
those simple things they lived in a very simple environment the prophet sallam used to help them he used to get for them he used to get for them what they used to want do the errands and the chores with us a lot of the times the wives are doing it themselves once in a while i know you're at work once in a while say don't worry i'll get the shopping list may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us